Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. In today's video, we're taking a look at Lemuroid, an all-in-one emulator on Android designed to be simple. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, Lemuroid is available right on the Google Play Store. It's free, it's open source, and there are no ads. Those are three really good things. Lemuroid is based off RetroArch. Now, one of the biggest complaints I get about RetroArch is that it's difficult to use and set up. I do have some tutorial videos, I'll link one in the description below if you want to check it out. But at the end of the day, sometimes people just like something that's straightforward, easy, and just works. And Lemuroid's whole goal is to do exactly that, just an all-in-one solution that's easy to use. If we take a look at the Google Play page here, scroll down the supported systems on this, we have the Atari 2600, the Atari 7800, the Atari Lynx, the NES, SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Sega Genesis or Mega Drive, Sega Master System, Sega Game Gear, N64, PlayStation, PSP, Nintendo DS, PC Engine, and Arcade via MAME 2003 and Final Burn Neo. Looking at the features, automatic save and restore game states, ROM scanning and indexing, that's a good one, optimized touch controls, quick save load with slots, support for zipped ROMs, another good one, display simulation with LCD and CRT, fast forward support, gamepad support, tilt to stick support, touch control customization with size and position, cloud save sync, no ads, and local multiplayer. I'll go over these features in just a second. What I wanted to point out here, at the time of filming, these are the listed systems and features. This app is actively being worked on, actively being improved. So things may change in the near future. Things may change in the future future. This app is being optimized, being improved, and continues to grow. So pay attention to it. When you first boot up Lemuroid, this is the main menu you should arrive at. This or something that looks extremely like it. One of the very first steps to do is select your ROMs directory, where you keep your games. And you have two different options here. You can select the specific folder where your games are at, or you can have Lemuroid just decide to search your whole phone. It's completely up to you. Now for me, I like to dump all of my games in one specific folder. It just makes managing them easier and searching for them quicker, but just feel free to do what you want. Once Lemuroid ends up searching your phone and finds all of your games, it will automatically populate them here on the menu and also provide artwork, well, except for one game. Next up, if you have some games that maybe you play a little bit more than others and you might consider them your favorites, they do have a favorites menu here. To add a game to your favorites menu, you just click and hold it and then click add to favorites. Now, if you're impatient and just wanna play your games, you can set up, well, I wouldn't say it's fully done yet, but it's done for the most part. You can go on ahead and open up a game and play it using touchscreen controls. There shouldn't be too much of an issue here. This emulator does a really good job at trying to optimize things and make things simple. Now, taking a look at the settings, it's worth noting there are two different settings menus. One you can access right from the main menu. The second one, you have to be booted up into the game. And the second one is a specific emulator setting. So this is just general settings here. Uh, you can specify your ROM directory if you need to respecify it or if it didn't find your game. And for me, I had trouble locating a couple of PS1 games and I had to manually specify where the directory was. The emulator did not find it. And that was a bit of a bummer, but at the same time, it's not really the end of the world. It's just a little bit of manual extra work. Uh, from here as well, there's display filters. You can have auto save states, vibrate on touch. This is one feature I actually don't like. I like it turned off. And that's just because every time I press a button, if I'm using touchscreen controls, I don't like my phone vibrating. On this menu, we also have gamepad settings, tilt sensor sensitivity if you're using the tilt function, uh, cloud saves if you want stuff backed up to your Google Drive. You can change your cores just for a few specific apps, actually just one. Uh, there's BIOS settings if you need to import a BIOS, and I'll talk about that in just a minute here. And a factory reset if you've screwed something up and just want to go back to the base version of Lemuroid. You can. It's simple and straightforward. On the change course submenu, as I said before, there's just one system to change cores for, and that's the Nintendo DS. So if you're running into performance issues and maybe things aren't working the way you want them to, or maybe a game's just not loading overall, 
you can try changing this from Desmumi over to Melon DS. For the display filter on the main menu, there are a few options here. You have Auto, Sharp, Smooth, CRT, and LCD. By default, it's set to Auto. Feel free to change it to whatever you want here. Again, a matter of personal preference. Now on the BIOS submenu, depending on the type of game you're trying to play, you may need to provide your own BIOS, which is a bit of a bummer. Now, fortunately, Lemuroid does detect your BIOS files if you have them on your phone. So all you have to do really if you just wanted to add BIOS files is dump them where you keep your games, hit rescan from the general settings menu, and your BIOS files should show up in the BIOS menu. I was running into issues left, right, and center trying to emulate PlayStation games on this, but Lemuroid did a really good job of detecting any BIOS files that I dumped on my phone. Now getting back to the main menu on Lemuroid here, I think the only thing I didn't go over were the Bluetooth controls. If you have a Bluetooth controller, it should work with this app, and that's a big plus. Just double check, go into that settings menu, check the gamepad controls, and double check your button mappings to make sure everything is correct. Now, if you have a ton of different games in your library, and I'm sure some people do out there, you can search for a game individually with that search icon in the center bottom of the screen. It does come in handy. Now, when you boot up a game, if you hit pause, it'll bring up the game menu here. You have options like save, load, quit, restart, mute, edit controls, and settings. The settings will vary based on the system you're playing. Each core has different options. For example, I booted up a PSP game and here are the core options available to me. You can see there's not really a whole lot here and that's the whole purpose of the emulator. It's designed to be simple. By default, you shouldn't really need to change any of this, but if you're running into performance issues, this is where you try to change a few things. For example, if your game is running slow, maybe try turning on auto frame skip. And if that doesn't help, maybe try increasing Framescape here from 0 to maybe 2, 3, or 4 and see if that helps. Overall here, I found PSP emulation to run fairly well. I'm a little disappointed I couldn't put a frame rate counter on here just to see how things exactly were performing. But at the same time, it's meant for simplicity, so I can understand that. Now moving on from there, I booted up a Game Boy Advance game and here are the core settings for that, even less than PSP which is completely understandable given the fact that most devices should be able to run Game Boy Advance games without issue. It's not very demanding. So we can see we have a solar sensor level, an LCD ghosting option, frame skipping, and color correction. If you're running into performance issues, you can try turning on frame skipping, but other than that, you don't really need to change anything here. And with Game Boy Advance games, I found Lemuroid to perform just fine. I also found no issues playing Nintendo 64. A friendly heads up here if you're playing Sega Genesis games and using touchscreen controls. By default, it's set to the three button controller. You can change this though from the settings menu. To change these controls, just pause your game and then enter your settings menu. You think you'd enter the edit controls menu, but they're not located here, they're in settings. On the bottom of the screen, it will say controller one default three buttons. Just click it and change it to default six buttons and you should be good to go. The six button controls are a little bit messy, but they work. Overall, I really like Lemuroid. I think it's a great little all-in-one emulation solution, especially if you're new to emulators. If you're new to the scene and just want one app that tries to do it all, something simple, easy, and straightforward, well, Lemuroid might be the app for you. It's easy to set up, the presentation is great, the touchscreen controls are really good, and also it automatically downloads the cores for you. Configuration is minimal. This isn't a bad app at all. On top of that, if you want to get into RetroArch and really want to get your hands dirty in terms of configuration, but maybe you're a bit intimidated by the app overall, Lemuroid is a great stepping stone. You can take a look at the cores, learn information here, and finally make that migration to RetroArch. So overall, Lemuroid gets a big thumbs up from me. Maybe not for PlayStation emulation though. Maybe older systems, but PlayStation, I did run into a few issues. I'm not overly happy with Lemuroid for PlayStation, but it is still being developed. It's still under work, and hopefully things get better in the future. Hopefully by the time you're watching this video, things are better. We just don't know yet. Anyways, that is all I've got for today. Let me know your thoughts on Lemuroid in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.